What I'm going to show you today is both amazing, beautiful, although some might have objections to that, and at the same time terrifying. Meet the largest spider in the world. Maybe a little introduction. I have always been more excited, happy, and generally fascinated by big spiders. The bigger the spider, the better. And if the spider is colorful, that's just perfect. That's how, among other things, I recently got a spider like Pamphobateus espimacala, which I showed you in the last episode. And, you know, not only is it big, but it's also pink and purple, so it's just awesome. By the way, since we're talking about big spiders, notice that I recently invested in these enclosures that open from the top, and I bought one, two, three, four of them. And in these very terrariums, I placed the biggest spiders I have, because when I used to keep them in the old ones, the soil would dry out very quickly. And I figured that if there's just one vent in the back, that's more than enough for a spider like this to have nice humidity. And as for announcements, I have one that's quite unusual. So on my clothing store, which you can find linked in the video description, hoodies with this print have just arrived, but keep in mind, these are children's size hoodies. I said there are big spiders here, and yes, there are very big spiders here. Here there's also a very big spider. Well, you don't know this G, right? She's massive. Up until now, she was my biggest spider, and that's just changed. Listen, in this terrarium, such an insanely huge sow has moved in, it's like the end of the world. This is definitely my biggest spider right now, and I suspect it's also the heaviest. Hop, okay. All right, we have a massive glass enclosure that's currently inhabited by something. And that something is a spider. You already know that. That something is a big spider. What's more, this spider is considered by many to be the largest spider in the world. All right, let me show it to you because obviously you don't want to look at me, but at this spider, right? The spider is hiding here. I must warn you, its urticating hairs are terrible. I'll elaborate on that shortly. Anyway, oh, it just moved over there. Uh, I think you can see it, right? And we're trying to show it, get it out somehow. Uh, it's not that bad. I thought it would be worse. All right, actually, she's a bit crazy. She's really, really fat. Okay. No panic. We're not panicking. Nothing's happening, and that's the issue. Um, what you see here, bravely marching along, but in a way that I really wouldn't want it to march like that. And actually, we can just let it go here. Okay, listen. This big chunk you see here is nothing other than an adult, powerful, fat, but not yet fully grown female spider of the species Theraphosa apophysis. And yes, this is my new acquisition. I bought this female literally four days ago, five days ago, something like that. Let's not make the same mistake as years ago. The spider is powerful. Enormous, thick, hairy, and missing a leg. If you count her legs, there's one, two, three. Pedipalp, chelicera. Chelicera, pedipalp, one, two, three, four. So it's just missing that one back leg. Well, unfortunately, that's how I bought her. I regret it a bit, but it's not like I'm hating on her, especially considering her size. Well, let's not kid ourselves. It's a spider. It won't regenerate that leg like a small spider would. And now, here's the thing. Yes, this female, with that big swollen abdomen, has a body length of about 3.937 inches, meaning measured from the start of the chelicerae to the end of the abdomen. So it's quite a spider, and she's bigger than that genia I've shown you more than once. In this terrarium, now center frame, there's another smaller female, Theraphosa apophysis. I think I'll sell that one to make room for another big spider, while this one stays with me. She's, you know, very sluggish because of her abdomen, because of the overall size of this spider. Additionally, from what I figured out after buying her, she has one leg that's a bit crooked, and I think this leg is also a bit crooked. I mean, you know, it's not like it bothers her or anything, but it's definitely like the legs were a bit twisted during molting and didn't heal properly. But overall, I don't think it bothers her in life. It doesn't bother her when eating, judging by the size of her abdomen, and it doesn't bother her at all. The spider is massive. When I saw her, I felt both scared and in love simultaneously. By the way, over there are spiders drying, uh, spiders that will go into the display cases. Here is my beautiful silver YouTube button, which I will hang up somewhere, but I don't know where yet. 
But anyway, coming back to the tarantula, I don't want to blow on it too hard, since spiders generally don't like that. Coming back to the tarantula, because soon a handful of people will show up here and say, but you're lying. But coming back to the tarantula and being the biggest, because soon someone will say, man, you're just making stuff up. God, you are. I'm making stuff up because a few episodes back in the video about giant spiders from Australia, I said that there's something called Heteropoda maxima, which is a true spider found in Southeast Asia, and it has a leg span even bigger than, for example, the tarantula. And here we come to a dilemma, because in my opinion, for example, this spider is the biggest spider in the world. Why? The problem is, how are we going to define the biggest, right? What does it mean to be the biggest? Does it mean it has the largest leg span? So if Heteropoda is not the biggest spider due to its small body and thin legs, what is the largest spider species? We also have a spider called Therophosa blondi, which is its twin sister. In the whole genus, there's also Therophosa sturmi and possibly other species from the Therophosa genus that haven't been discovered yet. Well, maybe we'll find out about that in the future. As for Blondie, from what I know, she's called the Blonde because that's her popular nickname, just the Blonde. Therophosa blondi, however, weighs more than Therophosa apophysis, so some might define size by weight. Well, if it's the heaviest, then it's the biggest, right? But if you take into account the overall massiveness, the total body length, and the leg span, then in the end it turns out that Therophosa apophysis is the one that reigns here, and it's generally considered the largest spider in the world. Now, as for temperament and venom, so here we have a situation where many people would say that such a spider can kill a person, that it's definitely huge, it definitely has very strong venom, and that its only dream is simply to take out its owner. In this case, me. No, that's completely false. Well, with such a Therophosa, which we could loosely call a Goliath bird eater, although, in fact, the name Goliath bird eater is specifically dedicated to Therophosa blondi, but in English, I think all three species have Goliath in their common name. So let's just say it's a Goliath bird eater in quotation marks. Uh, you have to be careful with these Goliath bird eaters, because first of all, they have terribly itchy urticating hairs. And it's not just them, the Xenestis genus as well, but the Therophosa genus is known for having the type of urticating hairs out of probably seven types that is the most irritating. And her whole backside is covered with these hairs. And if such a Therophosa settles in its terrarium, like here, in her little house, and covers a layer of the substrate with urticating hairs, and someone puts their hand in there, well, God have mercy on their soul because dealing with those hairs is just pure torment. It itches terribly, causing you to scratch yourself everywhere. Yesterday my Xenestis brushed against me, leaving my hands covered in blisters. It's an unpleasant experience that you must endure, as there's no remedy. However, it's important to note that Theraposas possess irritating urticating hairs, which they readily use, as demonstrated when she brushed herself out. Another thing, with a spider of this size, the fangs aren't just tiny little things, they're actually gigantic claws, and if one of those gets into your body, well, it's going to be ouch. And even though the spider comes from South America and is, of course, a tarantula, which suggests that its venom isn't particularly strong, the venom is actually strong enough to kill insects, snakes, frogs, or even a small bird. It can be deadly to small vertebrates, but it won't really harm a human. We won't end up in the hospital. Well, probably not. We shouldn't end up in the hospital. It definitely won't kill us, but since the spider is big and has quite a lot of venom, the bite still wouldn't be pleasant. Our hand would just swell up, it would hurt, and honestly, who needs that kind of adventure? So, I don't recommend holding it in your hands, even though I've had this female in my hands probably three times already, and I can see that she's very restless when she's on my hands. She's very heavy. I suspect she weighs around 60 to 2.469 ounces, just by eye compared her to a geniculator I once weighed, which was about 2.1 ounces, so I really wouldn't want a spider like that to bite me. Oh, and about the temperament. Well, uh, the temperament isn't the worst really, you can come across worse spiders, but she's very, I would call it, impulsive, and you definitely have to be careful so she doesn't suddenly speed up, and she can, despite her size. As I hold her on the table, I constantly hope she doesn't speed up, but you know how she is, you see what she's like, right? Really lazy. So that she doesn't speed up, just so she doesn't fall off the table, doesn't fall off the desk, so I'm keeping everything under control here all the time, or at least I'm trying to. And it's quite obvious that if a spider is already in its nest, it will defend that nest. So absolutely sticking your fingers, hands, or other body parts into the nest of such a spider is an extremely stupid idea. The main concern is the bite, but don't forget the urticating hairs. It's going to slowly walk around here now. Alright buddy, that's it. 
How should I do this? Well, I think there's no point in bothering her any longer, and I've shown you what I wanted to show you. And now it's enough to just gently lead her back, let's say. I don't recommend picking her up. I don't recommend picking her up to her hideout. Oh, 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 oh. The spider's abdomen is very thick. Remember to wash your hands after handling it. We'll take the tweezers as well, of course. We also put the hide back in so it has a big piece of cork. And that's it for this episode. Here's the female spider, who I initially named Berta. Why did I choose the name Berta? Because it was that big German cannon, or some kind of cannon. I really don't know anything about history. Anyway, she's also kind of a cannon in the world of spiders. If you have another idea for a name for her, of course, write it in the comments. I'm very happy to hear all your suggestions, and if I really like one, then we'll give her a different name than Berta. Berta is saying goodbye to you for now. I'm saying goodbye too. I hope you enjoyed the video and that I shared some interesting information with you about the huge creatures we can encounter in South America. Wait, I'll take one more shot. I made a mess. Alright, click.